one. Singular sensation, every little step she takes. One thrilling combination, every move that she makes. One smile and suddenly nobody else will do. You know you'll never be lonely with you. No. With the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee. Meanwhile, Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. <laughs> it isn't pretty. Then Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invite, and Madison responds with Virginian insight. Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win the victory for the Southerners. In other words, oh. what else was in the room where it happened? The room where it happened? The room where it happened? Someone else has in the room where it happened Alexander Hamilton What did they say to you to get you to sell New York City down the river? Alexander Hamilton Did Washington know about the dinner? Was there presidential pressure to deliver? Alexander Hamilton When you got skin in the game, you stay in the game But you don't get a win unless you play in the game Oh, you get love for it, you get hate for it You get nothing if you wait for it, wait for it, wait God help and forgive me. I want to build something that's gonna outlive me. What do you want, bird? What do you want, bird? If you stand for nothing, bird, what do you fall for? I, I want to be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. I want to be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. I want to be in the room where it happens. I want to be in the room where it happens The room where it happens I want to be in the room where it happens I want to be in the room where it happens I want to be in the room where it happens I want to be in the room where it happens The art of the compromise Hold your nose and close your eyes We want our leaders to save the day We don't get a say in what they trade away We dream of a brand new start but we dream in the dark for the most part Dark as a tomb where it happens I've got to be in the room where it happens I've got to be in the room where it happens I've got to be in the room where it happens I've got to be in the room where it happens I gotta be, I gotta be in the room where it happens I gotta be, I gotta be in the room where it happens Click, boom!
and for inviting me to join you and everyone in the audience tonight. I'm honored to celebrate the Lackey Clinic and the incredible work taking place in Newport News and the Virginia Peninsula. As most of you know, nothing is more important in our city than the health and well-being of our residents. In fact, Newport News City Council determined three priorities in our strategic plan. People, places, and government. A critical objective of the people strategic priority is to foster a healthy environment with equitable outcomes that increase medical services, fresh food, and active lifestyles. In order to realize this objective, it takes organizations like the Lackey Clinic to offer quality health care for all. Through strategic partnerships with other organizations and many of you here tonight, There's a button. <laughs> okay, test. One, two, three. Here we are. All right, well, once again, good evening, and you all do look fabulous. <laughs> and thanks again, Larry, and thank you all for the warm welcome. Again, I'm honored to celebrate the Lackey Clinic and the incredible work taking place in Newport News and across the Virginia Peninsula. As most of you know, nothing is more important in our city than the health and well-being of our residents. In fact, the Newport News City Council determined three priorities in our strategic plan, people, places, and government. A critical objective of the people's strategic priority is to foster a healthy environment with equitable outcomes that increase medical services, fresh food, and active lifestyles. In order to realize this objective, it takes organizations like the Lackey Clinic to offer quality health care for all. Through strategic partnerships with other organizations and many of you here tonight, the clinic is able to reduce health disparities and serve our most vulnerable population through life-saving and preventative care. The city's strategic partnership with the leadership team at the Lackey Clinic led to an innovative solution and initiative that was funded through a $105,000 grant from Centera Healthcare and Optima Health to enhance virtual care. The grant enabled the clinic to better connect patients with community partners to address the social determinants of their healthcare needs. This was accomplished by partnering with the Newport News Fire Department's Community Paramedicine Program to provide in-home visits to Lackey Clinic patients and deliver virtual urgent care to patrons of the Newport News Four Oaks Day Service Center for the Homeless. Tonight, it's important that we recognize and celebrate the skilled and compassionate professionals at the clinic who work every day to enhance the health and wellness of the people that they serve. Thank you for being here this evening to support the Lackey Clinic's mission and dedication to service. The clinic's commitment to inclusivity, affordability, and quality care has made it a vital part of our community. Larry and his team members like to say that no one is left behind. And with the robust offerings provided by the Lackey Clinic, this is truly the case. I hope you'll join me in continuing to support the Lackey Clinic and demonstrate to those in need that their lives and health matter. Thank you so much. Next time I'll learn to turn the button on so you don't have to do it twice. <laughs> Enjoy the show.
Mais mesdames et messieurs, it is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight. And now, we invite you to relax. Let us pull up a chair as the dining room presents your dinner. Be our guest, be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin around your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. Soup du jour, hot hors d'oeuvres, why we only live to serve. Try the grace of its delicious. Don't believe me, ask the dishes. They can sing, they can dance. After all, sir, this is France, and the dinner here is never second best. Go on, unfold your menu, take a glass, and then you'll be our guest. We are guest, be our guest. Beef ragu, cheese souffle, pie and pudding en flambe. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. You're alone and you're scared, but the banquet's all prepared. No one's gloomy or complaining while the flatware's entertaining. They tell jokes, I do tricks with my fellow candlesticks. And it's all in perfect taste that you can bet. Go on and lift your glass, you've won your own free pass to be our guest. If you're stressed, it's fine dining we suggest. Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. Life is so unnerving when a servant is not serving, is not all without a soul to wait upon. Ah, the good old days when we were useful. Suddenly those good old days were gone. Three years we were rusting, needing so much more than dusting, needing exercise, a chance to use our skills. Most days we just laid around the castle, flabby, fat, and lazy. You walked in and oops a daisy. It's a guest, it's a guest, six alive, well, I'll be blessed. Wine's been poured and thank the Lord I've had the napkins freshly pressed. With dessert, you want tea, and my dear, that's fine by me. While the soft in there shall chewing, I'll be bubbling, I'll be brewing. I'll get warm, piping hot. Oh, my dear, is that a spot? Clean it up, we want the company impressed. We've got a lot to do. Is it one lump or two? For you, our guest. She's our guest. You're our guest. He's our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Our command is your request. It's been years since we've had anybody here and we're obsessed with your meal, with your ease. Yes, indeed, we aim to please. While the candlelight's still glowing, let us help you. We'll keep going. Course by course, one by one, till you shout, enough, I'm done. Then we'll sing you all to sleep and your digest. Tonight you'll drop your feet up, but for now let's sit up. Be your guest, be your guest, be your guest. Please be our useful. <laughs> it's so great to be back here and I can't tell you how incredible we felt that we did a concert for people who couldn't afford health care right before the whole world shut down for a pandemic. I mean that is amazing and all the money that, that raised. We've, I, I have told this story dozens of times. They planned the concert two years ahead of time. They had no idea you know, that we were building up to this. So it was really providential. 
This is my good friend, Ted Cornell. And we're going to do a little number from South Pacific. from South Pacific and tonight you're going to hear lots of familiar tunes, lots of beautiful melodies and possibly a couple that you're not so familiar with and this might be one of them. This is Is It Really Me from 110 in the Shade.
Good evening, everyone. It's a privilege to be a part of this great evening. Thank you for being here and uh, for supporting such a worthy ministry here. These are great people. I love working with them. We don't see each other that often, but uh, they're some of the best musicians I've ever worked with, so this is wonderful. And you'll still hear Mike Jacobs later on. We're going to do some things together. Um, I grew up as a kid in New York City, and I had the privilege of uh, studying really wonderful music at a very fine school. And I, I noticed that on our program, I'm going to do some music of Tchaikovsky. Well, that's an easy one for me because it's some of the most beautiful music you'd ever want to hear. He was a genius. He was so gifted in so many ways, conductor, composer, arranger. The things he wrote are magnificent, uh, Nutcracker Suite, all these great, great pieces. Well, I'd like to just take a moment and for the next couple of minutes, just play for you some of the most memorable themes for me from Tchaikovsky.
going to see if Ted saw me back there. So I was just... <laughs> Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Thank you. Well, Irving Berlin, Blue Skies. Everybody remember that? From a, from a play called Betsy that lasted, I think, maybe six months in the 30s. So, you know, I'm not sure that really made it what it was, but Irving Berlin. Um, before we do this next tune, um, I'd just like to tell you a little story about the saxophone. So, I'm 11 years old in fifth grade, started to play saxophone. Uh, five years later, we moved to Germany. I'm in the ninth grade, and my junior high band director said, if you get a chance, buy a Selmer Paris. And I go, what is a Selmer Paris? He said, if you can get one, get one. Well, it had the word Paris, so I figured, that's pretty cool, we'll try to do that. So, we had a friend that spoke German, English, and French, so we drove over the border, we go into a music store, and I said, I'd like to have a song in Paris. And it's just as clear as day, I see the guy reaching up, he pulls down this case, opens up this case, and here's a beautiful silver saxophone. Now imagine, you're 15 years old, you really don't know anything, and you see a silver saxophone. You say, I want that. <laughs> well, what was really interesting is that during that time, my dad was a sergeant in the army, and um, Back then in 1971, a sergeant in the army made $300 a month. Well, he and my mom had saved up some money and decided to buy me this saxophone for $325. So imagine you spend more than a month's salary on a saxophone for a 15-year-old kid. Well, that is phenomenal. I'm now 67. I've been playing this saxophone for 52 years. But really what I'd like to do on this next tune, my mother's here tonight, so I'd like to dedicate this to my mom, Marguerite. Wherever you are, mom. And this is, uh, this is one of her favorite songs and one of my favorite.
Thanks, Mom. But when 
again beside me. Now I can die in peace, for now my life is blessed. On this page, I write my last confession. Read it well when I at last am sleeping. It's the story of those who always loved you. Your mother gave her life for you, then gave you to my keeping. trespasses and take me to your glory. I'm Larry Trumbor, the CEO of Lackey Clinic, and joining me is our medical director, Dr. Jill Cattell. <laughs> Wasn't that just some fantastic music and dance? It was amazing, but I still don't understand why they cut our music and dance number. <laughs> Well, Kim Spencer did say they might play our audition tape during the intermission. Well, I hope they only play the good parts. Uh, you'll laugh, okay. 28 years ago, Dr. Jim Shaw and his wife, Kuka, took God at his, his word to help others. Jim passed away several years ago, but Kuka is with us here tonight. Kuka, where are you? Jill and I never knew Jim Shaw, but I know many of you here in the audience tonight did know him, and thank you for honoring Jim's legacy by being here. Kuka, I believe Jim is very happy seeing what Lackey is doing today. 
Thank you for showing all of us what it means to truly walk in faith. Many of us take our health and our health care for granted. When we get sick or have a problem, help is a call away and the pharmacy is down the street. But that hasn't been the case for our patients. They struggle with complicated health problems and most haven't been getting any health care at all, except for when they're in crisis and access emergency services. But once Lackey Clinic becomes their medical home, they have access to high quality, loving, compassionate health care. Since our last gala, right before COVID hit in March of 2020, we have enjoyed some incredible growth, some unbelievable stability, and we could easily claim that somehow it was our decisions and vision that were responsible. But we know that's not the case. James chapter 4, verse 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. One of my favorite Christian singers, Michael W. Smith, said, everyone has a platform. The question is, what do you do with the one you have? At Lackey, we get to be the hands and feet to help people in need. We try to live up to our mission statement of giving care in a manner that honors the name of Jesus. Every person on our staff would be highly sought after in any health system, but they choose to work at Lackey because of who we are and what we do. Well, you get to be the hands and feet. Um, I, I hope I get to be the heartbeat. We start every day with prayer, and we ask for God's provision, his protection, and his wisdom. We see prayers answered and miracles happen, and we're amazed at how God shows up. For example, in 2020, we resumed in-person visits in the early summertime. God protected all of our clinical staff, and everyone remained healthy over the course of the year. Many businesses shrank or even closed in 2020 and 2021. We, however, expanded. We added optometry, we expanded dental services, and we doubled our behavioral health appointments. We received special funding in 2020, which enabled us to upgrade all our technology. We began seeing our patients virtually by the end of March, and by the end of the year, we developed a virtual urgent care program that allows us to serve low-income patients anywhere in Virginia. And our volunteer numbers are at an all-time high. We could not do what we do without the hundreds of volunteers who come and give up their time so selfishly, and many of them are here tonight. Tonight's gal is a perfect example. Kim, John, and Tina are a phenomenal team. Their vision, planning, attention to detail, and tireless work are the foundation of this wonderful event and the countless volunteers who helped make this thing happen. It's a God thing, and I know all of you can feel it too. We all have a lot going on in our lives. You have other places you could be this evening and other causes you could be supporting. Your presence and support here tonight inspire us to keep dreaming of how we can serve more people and continue to be a light in people's lives. God has a habit of asking us to do the impossible, and that's why we need him. Someone said, success is just God's favor. So the question we ask ourselves, what is success for Lackey Clinic? A cured patient, a toothache healed, a mind put to rest? Yes, these are ex examples of success. But what we believe, the work we do that has a domino, on our a domino effect on our staff, volunteers, and patients that ripples throughout their communities and hopefully into eternity. We know the efforts of Jim and Cooka Shaw have certainly had a ripple effect on all of the lives here in this room tonight. In the video you are about to see, the patients you will hear from will tell the story way better than Joe and I ever could. We hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. We thank you for being so generous in your support of Lackey, and God bless all of you.
fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S. and around the world. The number of cases soaring just today, more than 24,000. When I think back to early 2020s, um, there were a lot of questions. Uh, we didn't know how long things were gonna last. We didn't know how catastrophic the pandemic was gonna be. I think all of our immediate concern was how are we gonna continue to care for the patients? We were trying to balance the needs of the patients with um, the protection of the staff. We had to figure out a way to see them virtually that wouldn't compromise our quality of care and would keep them healthy. And it was difficult because in the beginning, even the experts didn't know how to treat COVID. And so we were hearing things daily that were changing about how you should see patients, what type of protection, and it was changing constantly. And so we had to be changing constantly. From our building aspect, there were physical things that we could do. So we took a room, opened the window, and made that where uh, patients could come and pick up their pharmacy prescriptions. We had some volunteers come and install plexiglass in the front office just to protect the staff and the patients. And then we put a washer and dryer in so that we could wash uniforms at the end of the day. I was touched by the courage of the staff, the clinical team, the administrative support, how well our patients did, how much they trusted us. Dr. Cattell and I decided early on um, that we weren't going to stop at just getting back to where we were. We were gonna use all of our um, resources that we had gained and, and some of the insights to um, get much better than we were before the pandemic. I've been to many clinics in my lifetime. Um, I came from New York, I've been to, I, Lackey to me is not just any clinic. This place is almost like family because I see the same people every day and I come in contact with the same people every day when I come here, you know, and they always have a smile on their face. So it always makes me feel like I'm welcome. So I came in and this is when I uh, met with uh, Nurse Carol. I remember, I mean, I cried. I mean, I just, I just spilled my guts, you know, to her and, and she was so patient and, and, and loving and understanding. That was something I never experienced in uh, any medical, you know, building. Last November, it was a tough time for me, and I lost almost 16 pounds less than two months. <laughs> and so, um, also, I noticed a cyst in my breast, which made me feel immensely anxious about it because my aunt passed away because of breast cancer at a very young age. I was pruning the tree and the, the limb swept the ladder out from underneath me. And when it swept it, I threw the chainsaw one way and I actually landed on my feet, running. Um, didn't think anything of it. About five days in, I couldn't get out the bed. I just came out of uh, a severe case of pancreatic attack. Didn't know where to go. A friend recommended it. That was God sent. My first experience was like, it was like I found something. I could, it was a piece of heaven for me. That's like the way I could describe it. The lady at Patient First, she's on the phone and she's talking to me. Okay, it really sounds like you have a blood clot. We don't have the ability to test for that. You need to go to the doctor to get checked out for that. When I called the ladies at Lackey Clinic, now I'm in the mirror crying. I'm in so much pain. As soon as I got in there, I told them what happened. They worked very hard, very, very hard. I was accepted. After my first visit here, I mean, I get some tests done and I feel extremely relieved. No matter like whatever is going to happen, and they will be taking care of me well. Here I am, I'm living out the most excruciating pain of my life. And then you tell me that all of a sudden, if it went to my heart, I was dead. When I got the ultrasound and they confirmed it, now I'm in the care of this family <laughs> that has Bible verses on the wall. <laughs> that they have all the machines and they have a facility. And I'm like, I step aside and I, and I kind of look and I, and, I, and I see how the staff here actually cares about, you know, people that come through that door. My piece of heaven that I found 
when I was in a rough place in my life, mentally and physically. And like it gave me that comfort to say it's okay. I'll be okay. I thank you because um, uh, without them, I probably wouldn't be here. You saved a life. You saved mine. And I know those others that lack the same, the help, the comfort. When you're young, and you're thinking about going into medicine, you have this picture in your mind of how it's gonna be. And then you get out there and it's nothing like you pictured. But then you come to Lackey Clinic and you immediately recognize that this is exactly what you pictured. And you say, aha, this is it, this is the place. And the patients recognize it too. We hear it all the time, there's something different about Lackey. And I would like to think that that's the spirit of the living Lord.
thank you so much for being such an amazing audience. It's really special to a performer to have a great audience, and I am so honored and happy to be back with you. Um, in every cabaret, a performer likes to dole out little nuggets of wisdom, and I thought, what better time than the opening of the second act? So I'd like to talk about this best-selling author, Ruth Sherwood, we talk about her in the musical Wonderful Town, and she has this book. It's very informative. It's called A Hundred Easy Ways to Lose a Man. <laughs> Chapter one. Now the first way to lose a man. You met a charming fella, and you're out for a spin. The motor fails and he just wears a helpless grin. Don't bat your eyes and say, ooh, what a romantic spot we're in. Just get out, leap under the car, say it's a gasket, and fix it in two seconds flat with a bobby pin. That's a good way to lose a man. He takes you to a baseball game, you sit knee to knee. He says the next man up at bat is going to bunt, you see. Oh, don't say, well, what's a bun? This game's too hard for little old me. <laughs> Just say, bun. What are you, nuts? With no outs, two men on base, and a left-handed batter coming up, he's going to slide right into a triple play, just like he did in the fifth game of the World Series in 1923. That's a sure way to lose a man. A sure, 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 sure way to lose a man. A splendid way to lose a man. Just throw your knowledge in his face. He'll never try for second base. 98 ways to go. The third way to lose a man. The lifeguard at the beach that all the girlies adore Swims bravely out to save you through the ocean's roar Don't say, oh thanks, I would have drowned if just one second more <sighs> Just push his head underwater and yell, last one in is a rod neck and race him back to shore That's a swell way to lose a man you found your perfect mate and it's been love from the start He whispers, you're the one to who I give my heart Don't say, I love you too, my dear Let's never, never part Just say, uh, I'm afraid you made a grammatical error It is not to who I give my heart, it's to whom I give my heart <laughs> You see, with the use of the preposition to, who becomes the indirect object making the use of whom imperative Which I can easily show you by drawing a simple chart that's a fine way to lose a man A fine, 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 fine way to lose a man A dandy way to lose a man Just be more well-informed than he You'll never hear, oh, promise me Just show him where his grammar errs And mark your towels, hers and hers Yes, girls, you too can lose your man If you will follow my plan A hundred easy ways to lose so we definitely don't want to lose this next man. I would like to ask Mike Jacobs to come out and play a song with me. lock my door somehow I couldn't warm up to one before what was it that controlled me what kept my love life lean my intuition told me you'd come on the scene if you listen to the See just what I 
have no idea how much fun it is to play with Ted. I mean, <laughs> and, and the poor fellow just really doesn't really know where I am. And he says, Mike, what are you doing, brother? So it's classic. It's, it's a um, Juilliard. I forgot that school. Juilliard, <laughs> the classical school meets Berkeley College of Music, the jazz school. And this is what you get. It's just so much fun. And they're, they're thinking about paying me for this. I don't understand. Um, I'm telling stories tonight, um, but, but I need to share this story with you. 
and it has to do with Jim Shaw. Um, a lot of you probably know Jim. Some of you never had a chance to meet Jim. But um, Jim Shaw was my spiritual father. He came into my life 25 years ago when my wife Claire and I uh, did a small group with Ian Kuka. Uh, we would go to the chapel and we were doing something on um, the treasure principles. It had to do with what do you do with your time, your treasure, and your talent. And of course, Jim and Cook had started the clinic at that time, and I really didn't know Jim, but I knew they were leading a small group, and I said, I got to be with those guys. I want to get to know Jim. So Jim and I became fast friends, and did, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 just bear with me. This is Charlene, um, about noon. Uh, if you're in town, give me a holler. Um, 880 Thanks. <clears throat> Bye. So that was uh, July 13th, 2015. Jim passed away a couple of weeks later. Jim Shaw was calling me to check in on me to see how I was doing. And so you see what the clinic does. You see how they reach out and love on their patients. I mean, Jim Shaw reached out to little old Mike and just to love on him. Didn't want anything, just wanted to check in. And he and Kuka, it's um, just an amazing gift. I had the privilege of being on the board for six years and it's just an amazing place. For those of you to get a chance to go to the clinic, I would encourage you to go there and see. You saw the patient's stories. You see what's happened tonight. It's just an amazing thing. So thank you for letting me share my story with you tonight. We're going to do one more tune. You heard that. By the way, thank you. Ted Cornell.
Juilliard in action, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Appreciate you all. I'm going to just pay tribute to Leonard Bernstein. It's the music I'm going to play next from West Side Story. And the reason it's special to me is that when I was in my last years of school in New York, Leonard Bernstein was always on hand and he was counseling, he was helping the choral conductors and uh, he was really an amazing guy. We sang, had the privilege of singing, you might even remember this, at the opening of Lincoln Center and uh, we did Mahler's Eighth Symphony, which is a huge work. <clears throat> And uh, Mrs. Kennedy was over there, and <coughs> Nelson Rockefeller over here. It was quite a night. Okay, sorry. I'll just play. <laughs>
And now a little phantom for you. Softly 
let be. Music shall caress you. Hear it, feel it, secretly possess you. Open up your mind, let your fantasies unwind. In this darkness, which you know you cannot fight, the darkness of the music of the night. Let your mind start a journey through a strange new world. Leave your thoughts of the life you knew before. Let your soul take you where you long to be. Only then can you belong to me. Floating, falling, sweet intoxicate. Trust me, savor each sensation. Let the dream begin. Let your darker side give in to the power of the music that I write. The power of the music of the So 
So we have come to the end of the program, and we thought we would end it with probably, it's in Italian, but I think uh, some, there's probably some people who love Italian here, um, but I think you might recognize it. We've really enjoyed this, and we are so happy to be back, um, and thank you. This is Conte Partiro, sung by Andrea Bocelli, and uh, or otherwise known as Time to Say Goodbye.
just want to thank everybody. What an awesome night. And you know the quality of the performers when you see who didn't make the cut. <laughs> you know, I have the privilege of uh, serving on the board. We have a wonderful board, but I have to say, and this is off the record, please don't share it with anybody, but I was the only one who voted for Jill and Larry to be on the program tonight. <laughs> Uh, and, and speaking of, of Jill and Larry, what I'd like to do before we leave is recognize uh, all of the staff, all of the volunteers that work with Lackey. We're definitely a family. So would everybody who is a, a staff member or a volunteer please stand? Thank you all very much. And uh, um, as Cook has said, there's something different about Lackey. That's just a very short statement, but there's something different about Lackey. And based on your generosity tonight, I think we all kind of got that message, didn't we? So, so again, thank you. Uh, you're dismissed. God bless and Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you.